So a bunch of the guys from Insomniac, you know, you previously did the post-apocalyptic franchise Resistance, yeah. and now you're back here again in a post-apocalyptic yeah. world, but yeah. where Resistance is kind of like very dark and somber, this is, you're kind of finding fun in the apocalypse. Yeah. So can you talk a bit about, you know, that idea, was that something you wanted to do, you know, kind of reverse the shift on the apocalypse, and how did you, how did you find fun in the apocalypse? Well, I think it was, it came out of, so the creative directors on this game are creative and game directors, uh, Drew Murray and Martin Smith, they were, they had done Resistance 3 as well. So they had just spent so much time in the apocalypse, like as dark and sad, that really it was just them to be like, you know, let's stop that, let's not do that. It's too let's, much. Let's do the opposite. Like they were, they were tired of being dark and sad all the time, and just basically wanted to flop it on its head. So at least he came at it from a different angle. Look at it was the apocalypse. It, you know, maybe dark and sad, but at the same time, there's no rules anymore. Like what if you just fully embrace that and just do whatever you want? Just give you a lot more freedom. Yeah. Exactly. And um, so this game is, you know, I would describe the gameplay as very hyper kinetic, always moving, always going, it just, it really never stops. So how did you guys kind of take advantage of the power of the Xbox One to achieve that hyper kinetic feel? I think uh, a lot of that is um, just having the ability to make the city huge and seamless to get through. Because you're moving at, in our game so quickly and, and fast, and not only like, a lot of a lot of more games are built very large or, or uh, sorry horizontally. But we wanted to do both. So with the traversal system we had to have up and down and here as well. Uh, so yeah, the Xbox it's just uh, it's better hardware so you can just fit all of that in. Um, have better performance in this open world. So moving away from Sony, was that purely because of the hardware on Xbox made it possible and so on the PS4 wouldn't have made it possible? Or? Well, I mean, Microsoft believed in the vision of the game, which was important, right? So so when we so when we signed with them, it was, you know, it was, they, they believed in it. And they said, look, we want to do this with you guys. And, and you know, we kind of, it's a weird game, right? Like, it's weird. So the fact that they, um, the fact that they were totally on board and like believed in the vision that was super cool. So like you said, like it is a weird game and I find it's kind of also like a hard sell. So how are you gonna pitch it to new audiences who just kinda of like look at it and it's like what what the hell is this? Right. Well it's it's kinda of one of those things where it's like we believe that people are ready for something new. They've lived in the grey and the brown and the, the typical for for a while and those games a lot of fun to their own credit, but it's, it, we thought with this next generation, it's time for it's time for something new. You know, uh, we think just the fact that it's unique and vibrant that will spark new. So it's like, so the the reason we don't we wouldn't typically stand out to whatever do bros or whatever that they say is the reason we think we actually might stand out to them. That's interesting. Yeah. And um, so how much freedom are we going to have here? Because I know it takes place in, in a huge world, yeah. but how much of it is it going to be you know, on rails controlled versus just free traversal? It's free traversal all Completely. the time. Yeah. So there's going to be no, nothing you yeah, can access. Yeah, no restrictions. Would you say it does open up something like Crackdown? Or? Yeah, you can, yeah, you, I mean, you can traverse on anything. Like, we built the world like it's a playground, so we don't restrict you at all. You can swim, like, all that kind of stuff. And you can just have to go to the top of the tallest building, jump down, and then go all the way to street level and grind on one of those grind battles, like, automatically. And can you tell us a bit about the uh, multiplayer mode here? Yeah, okay, so Chaos Squad is what it's called. And it's kind of a multiplayer experience, I guess what they call it. And uh, essentially... Is it seamless? Drop in, drop out? Yeah, yeah, so you can run up to a... Uh, you run up to a phone booth, go in, and boom, you're in there. And all your character, your character stats, how you look, everything is transferred exactly there. Uh, and basically what that does is you'll be there with seven other friends and it'll give you missions in the open world to go do. So you'll run around, do that mission there, and you have choices. Will these be separate from the campaign mission? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be like, I don't know, clear out this area or go drop a bomb on this blimp here, something like that. And you go do that with your friends and then, but you choose to do that. So each time you're going to get two mission options and one will give you like, one will give you a boost at the end night defense and one will give you kind of make the enemies harder at the end night defense. And depending on what you choose, you're basically crafting that end night defense which is where enemies are kind of charging and you know, firing away. Uh, so we wanted to give the player uh, let them choose how they want their experience to go. You know, we don't want to make it a certain pathway. So every time they go through it, it's just going to And will there be um, a lot of freedom and customization for your actual single player character as well? Yes. In terms of costumes, yeah, weapons, yeah, everything? Totally. Like, and the, yeah. Customization was one of our big pillars. It was like, be who you want to be. That was important to us. So yeah, there's tons and tons of insane outfits you can wear and thousands and thousands of combinations you can have. Uh, and yeah, you can be any... You can be 
any gender, any skin tone, different body types, and everything is gender neutral. So if you can be a dude wearing a skirt, you can totally do that. You can be a girl with a beard, like all that is free open. And actually when you're playing the game, you can change at any time. And not just your clothes or anything, your gender, but your gender and everything else too. So then we expect to see DLC in the form of costumes and weapons, you have anything planned for that? Yeah, we actually just announced our season pass. Okay. And that's gonna be two single player areas that add new stories and stuff like that. And with those there'll be new beta items and new costumes as well. Thank you so much for your time.